Good morning. This is Black Crow Walking, bringing you a study of A Course of Love by Mari Perrin. And we are up to chapter 14, verse 19. What a big job you've assigned yourself. It is no small wonder that you live in fear when so much is dependent upon you. And no wonder that when you find a respite, a place of rest and beauty and love, you want to claim it for your own, lest it go away. It must be maintained within your universe, or you will know it not, and its benefits will escape and be lost to you. You wish that you could join with it and make it one with you, but since you know not that this can be done or how to do it, you try to accomplish the next best thing and keep it close to you. A twin universe still exists, existing separately, but close enough that you can gaze upon it and feel the benefits of its warmth because of its proximity. More than this, you cannot do, but still you try. What, claim, what change you would bind this separate union? What change you would bind this separate universe to your own? For as long as it maintains its autonomy, which it must, even its nearness is not enough. And so, what you attempt next is to exchange is an exchange of sorts, like two countries: one rich in oil, another in grain. You set up dependency that will keep you linked. Some of you do this quite obviously and others and over years and years create a web of intricate design, a snare or trap that seems impossible to dismantle because of its interconnections. Inter, inter Others experience this plan of entrapment solely in their mind as they plot and plan for what they never have the opportunity to piece into place. Still others are more coy in their design and dress it up to look like sacrifice and gifts given, but all with the same purpose in mind. What none realise is that fear has, been, has replaced love. It's so easy, isn't it? It's so easy to fall into fear and to buy into the world and all its drama stories and disaster stories and it's so easy to jump back into that place of fear instead of being in the place of love, in the universe of love, in yourself, which is love. So verse 20 now we will go on to study, uh, having revised yesterday already now. So verse 20 of chapter 14 says, Some may realise that they are afraid of losing love. I think we're all afraid of that. And even speak of it and try to alleviate the fear with official comment, commitments, pledges and promises made. Others may, may deny their fear and say they trust in what they have and that and the faithfulness of the one they love. Fewer than these are those who do not need to voice their faith and trust, for their feelings remain strong despite their fear. For even though those who fear no deception must remain afraid of the great deceiver. Whether they call it life or death, it is still the same. It is a chance that cannot be foreseen and is always there. Death may take their loved ones prematurely, and if not prematurely, certainly eventually. Are you afraid of death? Are you afraid of the death of your loved ones? Are you afraid of losing love from the people who love you? And who will love you if they're gone? Maybe it's time to look at that. Maybe it's time to really be present with the love that's inside you and know that it is enough. It's more than enough. It's everything and everyone. And it's all around us. We 
We try and alleviate the fear with commitments, official commitments, pledges and promises made. Some of us deny our fear and say they say we trust in what they have and the faith and what we have in the faithfulness of the one we love. Fewer than these are those who do not need to voice their faith and trust for those for their feelings remain strong despite their fear. We know that we will always love the people that have departed from our lives and that they'll always love us. No matter where they are or where we are, we're always here. And that love never dies because it is who we are. And all of these who would not admit to fear and those who would not would still believe that love exists despite fear's claims upon it and think that they are lucky to have found a love to shield them from, for a little while from all the things they fear. And yet the greatest fear of all is that of loss of love. Wow, it really is, isn't it? We're so afraid to lose love. We're so afraid of not having friends who love us, not having family who love us. And yet the greatest fear of all is that of loss of love. You who have been given everything to be alone and separated, and se you who have given everything to be alone and separate fear most of all that which you have given everything to attain for what is loss of love but confirmation of your separate state what is loss of love but but being left alone loss of love comes from only one source Call it fear or call it separation, but it is still the same. For in your separated state, you ask that love make you special to someone else and that one special to you and that one special to you. You think this is what love is for and so you make it something it is not and only call it love. I think we'll leave it there. Love, loss of love comes from only one source. Call it fear or separation. That is still the same. For your, in your separated state you ask what love makes you special to someone. You ask that love make you special to someone else. And that one's special to you. You think this is what love is and so you make it something it is and only call it love. We are looking for love. Every time we reach out we're asking for love and yet we are the very essence of what we need to reach for. Reach for love. Love is you. You are love. And let that love truly shine in your life today. Love everything. Love the trees. Love nature. Love your garden. Love the neighbour. Love your animals. Just be love on legs. And remember that everything is love. And whether it appears to be giving you love or not, it matters not. Because it is love in its asleep or awake state. I love you and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. Until we meet again tomorrow. Bye for now.